friends, I'm Courtney and welcome to my channel. If you haven't already checked it out, I suggest watching my Midnight Sun reading vlog. So I'm basically re reliving my teen years by reading Edward's perspective as it comes to Twilight. So it's super fun. Also, feel free to head over to my Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages and follow me over there since I post a lot more bookish content that you won't find here. All right, so it is currently July 2nd, but I am doing a kind of late June recap. So weirdly enough, we are six months through the year or halfway through the year, which is mind boggling. I'm going to be doing a mid-year freak out book tag video probably next week that goes over my first six months of the year. Today will just be dedicated to the month of June, but yeah, lots of good reads for this month. I did fill out my always fully booked planner. So this is something that Little Inklings Design does. She's originally from Canada and she does a lot of fun reading journal or like organizing and planning your reading life out. And I just love her stuff. So I've been trying to follow along. I'm not the best calligraphy or like artists as it comes to filling these out and making them more intriguing or interesting. I write the basic information down and maybe at the end of the year or when I have my reading retreat, we'll see. I'll fill it in a little bit more because there's actually this really fun page I really want to fill out. It's the bookshelf page and like I started like numbering them you can see <laughs> so I'm up to 51 but I want to color them so the idea is to make each of these spines off of the books that I read so that is a lofty goal. I think that'll be very soothing maybe that's like a winter break Thanksgiving break kind of thing that I'll do. But yeah, that's just in the future, just so you know more about the the planner that I use as I reflect on my month and the past year or six months and then plan for what I want to be reading next. But in terms of June, I just want to give you a few stats before I dive into the books that I read. So they, I did read seven books. So three of them were print and four were audio. And I'll explain a little bit more as I go through the books, but it was a little bit slower of a reading month for me because the books were chunkier. The world is opening up a little bit more and I've been going outside and like spending time with friends and family, which are all good things. Like I'm not saying that they are distractions from my reading. They're, they're awesome experiences and like things that I want to be doing with my life in addition to reading, but I also had to do some time management and figure things out. So that's why my level of reading or not my, my number of books read this month has been a little bit lower, but I still had some quality reads in there. So I read 2,520 pages. The genres read were mystery, YA, sci-fi, contemporary, historical fiction, and romance. So that I think is pretty fun. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, there's also a space in here for you to write down how many books you've acquired. This was a pretty hefty purchasing month. So I bought eight books. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight books. Two of them were free. Two were sent by publishers. And then one or no, four of them were from, no, three of them <laughs> were from the June 21st, 22nd, just support indies kind of weekend or week right after our Father's Day. So I wanted to support them. And then the Cincy Book Bus had an experience or had a pop-up shop that I had to go to. She'll have another one next week that I'll probably be going to as well. But a lot of people are doing the no by July. I can't commit to that. I, I want to be optimistic that I won't buy anything. I just don't know. I can't, I don't want to lie <laughs> to you all. So that, that's where I'm at with that. So yeah, so those are just my stats. Here's the, the page that I wrote everything down. And yeah, I, I love how there's like all these extra space here. <laughs> I wish I was that ambitious that I could fill those up, but I'm just not that fast of a reader or I just don't, I'm, I don't have the ability to read that much in a month. So that is that. Anyhow, let's get to the books that I read. So the first book I read this month was Magpie Murders by Anthony Horowitz. So this is my way to kind of delve into mystery or murder mystery since I really haven't like intentionally read the genre before for one of my book clubs back in the day. We read and then there were none and then I think a few other Agatha Christie novels were in there too. I think the um, Murder on the Orient Express I think was another one that I had listened to. I think that might have been on my own. I can't remember if that was for book club or not, but that's pretty much that I know of or can remember the extent of my mystery 
knowledge as it comes to the genre. But I feel like this year especially, and I guess last year too, I've just diversified my reading life and I've loved that. And it's included going outside my comfort zone or like my norm and trying different genres, which now includes mystery. So I had this and then I think I bought another book. Oh, Eight Perfect Murders by Peter Swanson. I bought, I think a few months ago. So those are my first like legit mystery purchases that I can remember. But anyway, this follows two different stories going on. So one story is like kind of present day, where an editor at like a publishing house is reading through a manuscript from one of their like acclaimed writers who's done really successful has like a whole series out and this is another book and pretty much the last book in the series. And then her reading it, she like starts out with her narration and then it jumps into the manuscript itself. So now we're reading the book that the acclaimed author has written. So it's kind of cool because it is like a story within a story, but it turns out it's a mystery inside of a mystery. So the series that that author writes about is a mystery kind of thing. So it's kind of like a Poirot experience as well. And then um, like the author ends up dead in like the present day so the editor is trying to find clues in the manuscripts and like other aspects of his life in the real world to figure out what happened and then we're also trying to find out who the murderer is in the mystery that he wrote so it's like pff, so cool i loved it i love the story in a story element but it's also fitting the books about books in there as well so yeah it is pretty chunky this one did take me a while this was probably a week and a half to two weeks so that's probably probably why my month of reading was a little bit less or like slower than usual but i savored every page of this i was in it and just enjoyed the storytelling elements and the the plot the characters it i mean i'm not an expert as it comes to like predicting mysteries and like who the killer is i'm good at good at predicting like contemporaries or like love story kind of things which is fine like I enjoy that process but this like had me critically thinking throughout the whole time and I enjoyed that. Then we have Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall. So this I thought was such a cute story about two guys who are complete opposites and the way that they come together is that the one guy Luke is the son of a like a famous I think he's a musician, I can't remember, or movie star, but like is trying to make his own way in the world, but he's like not doing great. He like drinks a lot, is not good at relationships, has a job he's not crazy about, and is just basically trying to get by and not be in the press as much, but it, it he keeps getting in the press in bad ways for being a jerk, for being violent, which is not the case it just was like a bad picture of a in instance that he was involved with so the way to kind of fix that and to help out his job because he could lose his job is to be seen with an appropriate partner or boyfriend so in comes Oliver who is a friend of one of Luke's friends <laughs> or uh, closest friends so they get like set up and as like a date but then they both agree like yeah like, we can do this fake dating thing Oliver just wants to get like his family off his back a little bit or just wants to help and then Luke is trying to help his company and like get a better name for himself. So obviously with fake dating emotions are going to get involved which is what happens here with the two of them but I liked how like that can be predictable in itself but I loved it went a little bit deeper than I thought it went into like their own lives and then like they were supporting each other and standing up for each other in different instances or, or different times that they were together in public like fake dating and it develops into like a really strong friendship and like they give they are slowly like wanting to give it a chance but not really wanting to say it out loud but they both know it in their own way so yeah I really enjoyed this one this one was pleasantly surprising because I I remember saying like yeah like I know how to like predict the romance kind of genre which I did but the other details of it I was just elated with and the last print book I read was Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer. So this was pretty chunky. This took the last two weeks of June to read. So usually with my reading blogs, which this was the selection for, we read like a Gilmore selection for a love story when Luke tells Lorelai that he's in, he's all in, when they finally get together to date in season four? I think it's season four. 
end of season four, beginning of season five. <laughs> and yeah, so this is the love story between Edward and Bella, but told in Edward's perspective as it comes to the book Twilight. So I did a whole reading blog about that. I will put the link up above as well as in the description below, but su super fun book. I don't think this was like one that blew my mind because it did follow the same plot as Twilight, but literally just told in Edward's perspective. So not too many new things there, but we learn a little bit more about Edward's family, his, I guess, adoptive family or vampire family, which I thought was really nice. And it just made me think, me and my friend watched Twilight after I was done reading this, and it just made me think about how a lot of the characters like did not get enough screen time or face time, even though their roles and their abilities were so critical. So that kind of made me frustrated, but... I mean, not the movie, not the book itself. This, I just think, was an enjoyable read and one that I'll add to my Twilight collection. I also read A Rogue of One's Own by Evie Dunmore. So this continues The League of Extraordinary Women, which I had read Bringing Down the Duke last month or the month of May. So I wanted to continue because I loved the historical fiction aspect of it. It's like historical fiction and romance put together because it's talking about the women's suffrage movement in the late 1800s in England. And both of the leads in both of these books are like wanting to be more independent or wanting to be more seen as like leaders or confident people in society and have voting rights and all of that. This one though, I wasn't as much a fan of as I was bringing down the Duke. So this one follows a woman who is like a publisher or wants a publishing house and gets it, but has to split it with another man <laughs> for <laughs> first, you know why <laughs> that a man had to be also part of it. Like the woman couldn't just have ownership herself back in the day, even sometimes now, but whatever. Anyway, the they they obviously don't like each other to begin with. And I don't like like I don't think this is a spoiler, but they they come up with this agreement that in order for her to get majority vote or majority ownership, like fifty one percent to forty nine versus fifty fifty, he offers like, oh yeah, like come sleep with me or like basically bribing her and I I got so mad at that like I know it's fiction and whatever but it just made me feel like icky and gross inside that that was what was portrayed and I think maybe the author did that to prove a point that that is what not had to happen but like it, those things did happen and it's so wrong um yeah I just I just didn't agree with that choice and like after that, like it does get taken, not advantage of, like it does happen, but then it develops into like more of feelings and everything like that. I just, I just didn't like, like that. It just didn't make me feel good or it didn't sit right with me. So that's why I, I rated it a little bit lower. I think I gave it a three out of five. And, I, and others may disagree with that's the reason that I gave a lower rating, but as soon as I, because I, I listened to it, as soon as I heard it, I'm like, I don't know, I was very startled and shocked by it. So the rest of it was fine. <laughs> Other than that bribery part for sexual favors and all that. It was fine. It was a good story about like women's empowerment, which I know sounds like, ah, <laughs> like compared to the example I just gave or part of the plot. But taking that out, it, it was like she was part of a group of like women trying to gain more respect and like voting. So it did bring in other elements of like women supporting women and all of that. So there's that. And then I listened to Instructions for Dancing by Nicola Yoon. So Nicola Yoon is one of my favorite YA authors. She writes beautifully about like diversity, mixed race relationships and all of that. And I just love it so much. So this follows two characters. So Evie is struggling with like what it means to be in love or what love is. Since her parents split, she caught her dad cheating on her mom and she also has a younger sister and the younger sister doesn't know anything about that. And the, the mom and the dad were both like both know and the mom necessarily wasn't upset with it, but they just went their separate ways and Evie just wasn't the same. So one day she goes to drop off all her romance books because she she doesn't want to read about romance anymore at a little free library and comes upon this woman who like knows her name and like starts talking to her and she picks up this book called instructions for dancing and evie takes that with her 
um, to like look over and all that. So she, after she does that, she is able to have these like visions. So whenever two people kiss each other, she is able to see what the relationship was like leading up to that moment and what their future looks like, which ultimately leads into um, like them breaking up or somebody dying or whatever. So she's been having these visions. She had it with her sister and her sister's boyfriend. She had it with her two friends and like that kind of ruined the friendship for her because she knew what was going to happen, but she didn't like tell them that she has this new ability. And then she goes into this dance studio because it's summer break and like, why not try something different? And she meets this guy X and they become dance partners and then they start developing feelings for each other. And then she also has a kiss with him and then sees her future. And like, I like at that point when they finally kissed, I completely forgot that that was something that she could do because it hadn't happened in a while. And when it happened, I'm like, oh no. And we see what the future looks like and then it just goes from there. So that I thought was really, I don't know, it was just different. Like I hadn't read anything by her that included this, not supernatural, but like kind of like mystical element to it. But I love that it addressed her relationship with her parents, a little bit about forgiveness, fate, um, friendship, family, taking risks when it comes to love. So yeah, I thought it was a surprising read. It's not my favorite by her, but I I liked it. I mean, I think that could be fun if that was adapted as well. I mean, most, <laughs> I love all of the books that have been adapted by Nicola Yoon so far, including The Sun's Also a Star and Everything Everything. So this would be fun too, but who knows? Along the same vein of women's empowerment in late 1800s in England, I also read A Lady's Guide to Mischief and Mayhem. I always wanted to say mischief and murder, murder and mischief or mayhem and like, I like always say it wrong so I had to read it this time but this is by Amanda Collins. So this I thought was pretty fun like the little tagline I thought was really cute but it basically said of all the crime scenes in all the world she chose to walk into his twice or something. I just thought it was so cute and like that just made me want to pick it up in general because of that tagline from Casablanca-ish and I uh I I liked it. It was about the the female was a like a journalist for the, I guess the beat or the the section of it was called A Lady's Guide to Mischief and Mayhem. And it talked about all the crimes and like the results of them and just trying to keep women safe and like aware as they're going about their business and whatever. So the woman, she like decides to interview some folks involved with one crime or one murder and unveils like a lot more evidence that the detectives had missed. So she publishes that information. The detective comes into play being like, what are you doing up in our business and all of that. And they find themselves in the middle of a crime because that person I think was involved, but wasn't the lead or it was just like wrongfully accused or arrested. So they kind of work together like about how like law enforcement meets the media and then working together in a way. So I thought that was pretty interesting to put that together and it is a romance. So we see that they have feelings and develop feelings for each other and let's see, it's, we'll see if it comes to anything else. But yeah, I thought that was a cute one. And then last but not least, I read Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. So this was also an audiobook, and I absolutely loved it. Her storytelling is just, freaking amazing like every time that like no nothing disappoints me <laughs> with her writing so I've read Daisy Jones and the Six by her I have Evelyn Hugo and then I just read Malibu Rising and then I think I have One True Loves coming up in my queue soon from Libby the library app for uh, audiobooks and ebooks so this follows the four kids of Mick Riva, who was like a famous star or rock star. And it, it, I love it because it goes through each like character's like backstory. So we learn about Mick Riva and like his story. We learn about June, who's his first wife and her story and like where they came from, like their humble beginnings or like their dysfunctional families, how they came together. And then we go into each of the, the children. So it's, and there's so much infidelity because Mick just can't, based off how he grew up he just can't stick with one person or like he thinks he can but it just doesn't go that way we see how the children are affected by him coming in and out of their lives and then finally out for good and then june 
not being able to be the mom that she could be or wants to be because she's so heartbroken and like she took a risk marrying him because her parents didn't want her to. So yeah, she just had a lot going on. And then the older sister, Nina, is kind of the, she's the oldest, but also like the parental figure because the mom becomes an alcoholic and all this kind of stuff and is not there for the kids. So she takes on that responsibility. There's two boys in the middle and then a girl. One of the boys was from another woman that June took in. So oh my god it's just so wild and the four siblings are all surfers and that's kind of how like they bonded when they were little they just picked up a surfboard and learned to ride and went from there so it was amazing like like you can kind of you you imagine the route it's going to take with each of the characters and then it just go it's it just surprises you in the best way possible but it also doesn't wrap up nicely in a bow at the end like there there is some resolve there but i think it's left open to see what their futures look like which i i love that because so much changes in the last like few chapters with the experiences that they're having together honestly and uh yeah it's just cool to see like their sibling relationship be like so strong I just love that so much. I'm one of four as well. Like my siblings and I, we're, we don't talk like every day, but I think that we're relatively close compared to like other siblings that I know. So yeah, it's, it was just, I guess that was good. That's how I kind of saw it. Cause it, not that my family is in that kind of predicament at all, but it was like my sister, my two brothers in the middle and me, like all the same, same parents there. But it was kind of cool to see that representation not even that but like something that i could relate to i guess and i was am the youngest so i guess i relate to kit <laughs> in that story but yeah i i really enjoyed that one i think i gave it a 4.5 out of 5. all right so i think i've talked long enough my counter says about 24 minutes i've been talking to you all it's pretty for seven books i talked a lot so apologies there Maybe because I thought I had to compensate for not reading too much. I had to talk more than usual. Who knows? Yeah. Anyway, I am starting my July reading. So I started Anna K today. And that is already starting off with a bang. Like it's like doesn't hold back is like, like right in your face with all of these different uh, issues coming to light. And like it does, it really starts off well so we'll see how that goes and then i'll be reading lillian boxfish takes a walk after that and then i think the hobbit is going to be my reading vlog for the month of july so i'm excited there so yeah that's all part of the path or pantheon reading challenge from myth take reads so that was also the video i had done a few weeks ago for my july tbr so that's what that will be so that's at least five books and then my audiobook selection right now is written in my own heart's blood so i'm alternating between that and a print version of the eighth book of outlander because it just needs to wrap up folks i've been saying this for many many videos and it just needs to wrap up come to an end so i'm ready for tell the bees i've gone home or i've come home the ninth book in the series that comes out in november so this is now the running joke of Incessant Bookworm. Yay, yay, yay. Anyhow, I think I'm going to leave it there. I will be doing a, well, knock on wood, I think I'm in the middle of planning it. I put a vote on Instagram for a reading retreat I want to have in, well, what one, I showed, I had people vote on different parts of the reading retreat. I need to help people picking things for me to do. So it was the mountains or beached. The mountains one for that so i have a few ideas there salt or sweet snacks and salty one for there and then will i be reading a lot of books that are smaller or one chunky book and the lot of books that are smaller one so i'm excited to pick out what that's going to be that's probably going to be in august i have two potential dates that that can happen so I already have started a August TBR, which I'm not going to share right now because <laughs> it always is subject to change, but I'm thinking about smaller books that could be a part of that reading re retreat. So yeah, I'm excited for that. That will be in the not so distant future, 
if you say a month and a half or so is not so distant there you go anyhow thank you so much for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up feel free to comment down below and let me know what you read the past month of june or what you thought of books that i have shared with you today i will leave my book reviews i have book reviews for magpie murders and boyfriend material up on my blog that i will list in the description below as well yeah, and I think that's pretty much it. Feel free to hit subscribe and the notification bell to know when I post next on this channel and send to a friend if you think they would like it as well. I hope you have a great day and happy reading. Mm -hmm.